confidence interval overlap, just sometimes it can really help understanding. Now, we've talked about the means and confidence intervals for the independent groups design, and we can eyeball the difference we're interested in, and we can eyeball the confidence interval on that difference because it's a little longer than either of these. Of course, we'd like to have uh, this figure here because this tells us directly what we need to know, and we can conclude that there's very strong evidence because this confidence interval is a long way from zero, very strong evidence of some positive effect, and we can estimate it and give an interval estimate on that point estimate. Terrific. But alas, in the world, quite often we're only shown this. Fortunately, in the independent groups case, we can compare these two confidence intervals and how they sit in relation to each other and draw some conclusions. I'll demonstrate by going over to summary two, where I've set up some uh, invented data for two means for independent groups with 95% confidence intervals. Now these, in this current configuration, just about touch end to end. And that corresponds to reasonable amount of evidence, a bit of evidence, reasonably strong evidence, that there is uh, a non-zero difference between the two underlying population means. If I turn on the second display, we can see here that this confidence interval on the difference is some distance away from zero. In fact, using our rules, we'd say the p-values round about 0.01, and in fact it's 0.006, a little less than 0.01. And that is uh, one rule you may care to remember. If two independent, 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 if two independent 95% confidence intervals just touch end to end, then we have a reasonable amount of evidence that there is a true difference uh, greater than zero in the underlying population. And it roughly corresponds to p round about 0.01 if you want to think in terms of p-values. Now, we can, uh, in this page, turn on overlap. That's marked by these horizontal lines. And we can play around a bit. So I could say, let's change the second mean to, say, 8. So now we've got quite a lot of overlap here. And our 95% confidence interval just catches zero there. So, well, we've uh, got very weak evidence that there might be something going on there perhaps corresponding to a p-value of 0 0.06, 0 0.07, something, and there we are, 0 0.07. But it's surprising, I think, that quite a large amount of overlap here corresponds to, well, perhaps even a little bit of evidence, a tiny bit of evidence of some difference. And if I increase this a little bit, let's make it, say, uh, 8.4. Now we've got overlap that is um, moderate, I'll call it. The overlap is roughly something like half of MOE, half of this arm length, half of this arm length, roughly speaking. And here we have the confidence interval on the difference, just a bit clear of zero. So our p-value would be a whisker less than 0.05, and there it is, 0.04. So even when 95% confidence intervals independent confidence intervals overlap a moderate amount, we still have a little bit of evidence of difference between the two underlying population means. Is it surprising that with so much overlap of two independent 95% confidence intervals, we have a little bit of evidence that there's a true difference? Think of the cat's eye figures on each of these confidence intervals bulgy round here, thinning out downwards and upwards, and the same here. So the only bits of these cat's eye figures that are overlapping are the relatively thin bits, and the big bulgy areas are a little bit separate. So perhaps it's not too surprising that this amount of overlap of confidence intervals still gives a little bit of evidence of difference. So this is the overlap rule for 95% confidence intervals for independent groups. I must stress for independent groups. And it says that if two confidence intervals uh, just touch end to end, so we had that about like this, then 
that's uh, a moderate amount of evidence that there is a difference in the underlying population. Usually you don't see these overlap lines to help you. And alas, quite often you don't see the figure displaying the difference. But if you see two confidence intervals, 95%, and you can verify they come from independent groups, then you can look and see about overlap. And if the two don't overlap, if they don't even approach, then you've got really quite strong evidence of an underlying difference. If they overlap a little bit, or even up to a moderate amount, you've got just a weak amount of evidence of a true underlying difference. If you are on top of that rule, well then you are ahead of most of the world. So enjoy. Yes, if you overlap sufficiently, you're not significantly different.